this. Mm -hmm. So are you ready? Yeah. Do a couple more. Thank you. You're allowed to smile. <laughs> Uh, okay. uh, so I'm going around to all of you. If you just look at the camera. And I'm going to do another hand to everybody. Well, can I start? I'm waiting to wait till the so here we go. And remember to use the microphone for okay. best sound. We'll be okay. professional. These are establishing shots. Jesus. So professional. It is July 20th, 2018, and I'm Madonna Wise, and I'm delighted to be here at the Pioneer Florida Museum. And we're here to feature a matriarch of Dade City, Mrs. Martha Walker, and it's just an honor to be here. I'm going to have each of our panel members uh, introduce themselves. Thank you. Scott Black, I was a student at Pasco High from 1979 to 1982. I'm Martha Bullard, and I, was a, I graduated in 1970, and Miss Walker was a tremendous inspiration and role model for all of the students at Pasco High School. Mary Giella, I was the one trying to control Martha and Greta. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are in a, a okay. full-time job. <laughs> we are definitely in a period of time when education is really important. It's always been important and it's it, it seems such a pleasure to talk about those those people that have come before the current educators and made such a difference. And so we want to just talk about the character, the personality, the history of Martha Walker. She did, as Dr. Giella just mentioned, she had a cohort along the way, and that was um, Greta Adams. So we're going to be talking a little bit about her partner as well. But let's start, our, start out by um, actually by talking about Martha Jackson Walker from Cottonwood, Alabama, and another young lady from Batesburg, South Carolina, two Southern Bells, right. perhaps, um, and how they came to know each other and how their names are so well known in the city of Dade City and probably everywhere. We've got a, um, an opera singer who teaches part-time in Turkey. We've probably got people all over the world that were impacted by uh, these two teachers. But Martha, would you tell us about the girls from Cottonwood and Batesburg? How Greta and I met. I came to Pasco in 1962. And Greta came the following year as a substitute teacher. And um, th that same year, we needed another addition in the business department, and Greta was certified, so she became another teacher in the business department. And how we actually got to know each other was her daughter was visiting the grandparents in South Carolina, and Greta wanted to go up and get the child, so she came into the lounge one day and said, would you like to drive to South Carolina with me? I said, sure, I've never been to South Carolina. So we take off that night, and it was Halloween night. And we're on our way, and somewhere in Georgia, we come to this bridge, and it says, travel at your own risk. Well, we did. Thank God we made it back okay. So <laughs> that's how we got started. So we were friends for up until her death in 2000. Did a lot of traveling together every summer, in fact, in fact most Julys, we were on a cruise. She and I both wanted to cruise every summer, so we went on several cruises together. and All the ball games, so we just became the very dearest and closest friends. Until this day, I dearly miss her. What was the secret to your friendship, Martha? That's the, it lasted We just both decades. enjoyed the same things. We, we, loved, uh, we loved kids. We loved to go to ball games. Now, of course, she was a South Carolina Gamecock, and I was an Alabama Crimson Tide, but besides that. 
we just enjoy doing the same things together. So, and I never will forget. I I I freeze peas every year, and I used to go out into the fields and pick them. And one year she wanted to go with me, so she went with me. And we got back and put them up. She said, now I know why you're so stingy with your peas. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That was work. Mm -hmm. If I could, Arthur, I'd like for you to talk about um, your perception of Martha, and we'll get her reaction to that. About, you mentioned earlier that she was the soul of the school. She was, and she was the embodiment of all that was good and right and virtuous uh, in a teacher, in a leader, as setting an example for students. And it was a very, very, very good one. And you had fun, but you knew the parameters. And uh, so that was my experience. And you never wanted Miss Walker to point her finger at you. You never wanted that. And most of all, you never wanted her to grab you by the ear. So <laughs> she was just a wonderful, wonderful, loving, caring teacher who made certain that students understood and appreciated the rules, followed them, and at the same time, she extended great love. Tell us about the classes that she taught, because I think they've changed over time. Well. I guess she could better do that, but in my opinion, even though the name was there uh, in terms of business classes, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it was all about love. It was all about doing the right thing. It was all about being something. It was all about achievement. It was all about uh, becoming something and giving back. You know, those were the things, in my opinion, that she taught. You know, she taught students how to be great uh, citizens and examples. Those were the things that you got from Ms. Walker. And when you left her presence, you knew how you were supposed to be as a man or a woman. Wow. The subject I taught was typing business English, and I did teach a couple of classes in shorthand. Business English was my favorite. One of the reasons I mentioned this, Martha, and you, you mm -hmm. all know that, is today we don't teach those, no. they don't teach these kinds of <coughs> topics. And someone listening to this tape, um, <coughs> they might, might say, well, what is um, shorthand, for yeah. example? No, they don't like um, it. Shorthand is somewhat obsolete, or Oh, no? it is, yeah. Uh -huh. Went but, out several years ago. And uh -huh. the actual typing, they do everything now on computers. Uh -huh. That's why I retired. I'm not a computer person. I don't even know how to turn one on, <laughs> and I'm not going to learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a typewriter, and that's all I need. But the thing is, the 15-year-old that's listening yeah. to this tape might not understand about those old IBM typewriters. Right. That was the mainstay back mm -hmm. in the day, wasn't right. it? Everyone needed to know how to type. Right. Yeah. And I've had so many kids to tell me that that was one of the best subjects that they have, even the ones that today do computers, uh -huh. that that was one of the best subjects they ever had, plus my business English. The business English. And they no longer teach it. And that leads to you, Scott, business English. Sure. Well, and it is too bad that there are a lot of things that are not taught in school anymore, civics being one of those, but business English, uh, Miss Walker's business English uh, class is probably one of the most valuable classes that I've ever taken. Um, in fact, I use it on a daily basis with my work. Um, and it was kind of interesting because when I went to college with the entrance exams, I qualified for the two-day English because I did well enough on the exam. But then when I got into the two-day English, much to the professor's frustration, he didn't understand why I could write as well as I did when I couldn't tell him what an adjective or an adverb were. But Miss Walker just made it so plain how to go in and write. And, and of course, we had a lot of fun at Miss Walker's expense, too, when we'd say, where is that at? <laughs> and what would you say, Miss Walker? It's behind the at. Behind or the at. It's, <laughs> or it's between the A and the T. <laughs> it drives me gr crazy every time I'm listening to a, these football commentators. <clears throat> In fact, I have a letter now on type, 
and send to ESPN concerning their where is so-and-so at and where are you going to. It drives me crazy. <laughs> Does so this, it was grammar, grammar sentence and punctuation, construction, and letter writing. Con uh, um, one of the people commented, and I forget who it was on Facebook about commas. Yeah, that you were the master of commas. <laughs> that you, one of your final exams was like a hundred word correction. No, my something like well, that? my comma. I've already told this story. Mary's uh, nephew used to call me comma mama. <laughs> uh, I gave a test every year that it took two days to take. It was a total of 196 commas. And I would tell the kids there's 196 commas. Well, this one boy, one, one period said, are you sure there's 196 commas? And I said, yeah. He said, well, I can't find but about 150. And the boy sitting behind him said, I got 350. You want to borrow some of mine? <laughs> <laughs> There was my senior, junior, I think it was my senior year, you and Mrs. Walker, Miss, Miss Adams, taught a business English class together for the school board employees. Yes. And I thought, what a great pairing that would be to have Miss Walker and Miss Adams teaching the business English class. And it was the secretaries, the, you know, the, the, the assistants that were working in the school you know, offices. Mm -hmm. And I know they had a great time having, because you know, we had a great time with Miss Walker. I can only imagine what it'd be like to have Miss Adams and Miss Walker <laughs> teaching that. But I have to tell this story on Mary. Right after we moved up on the hill, the 70 71 school year, the school board came around, you know, looking at the rooms. So you and were everything. in the old building? I was in the old building to start with and then moved up on the hill. Okay. Anyway, Mary and the, all the school board came to, you know, look, look at all the rooms. And Mayor turned to me and she said, are these walls soundproof? And I said, Ms. Giella, if there's a Greta Adams on one side and a Martha Walker on the other, there is no such thing as a soundproof wall. <laughs> <laughs> so the population of Pasco High from the time you came in, 62? Mm -hmm. 62. And you retired in 97? 97. Mm -hmm. That must have been, what, was, oh, what were the differences, Martha, over time? A big, big difference at the, what is now the middle school was grades nine through 12. And I can't remember the exact enrollment, but it was a lot smaller. <clears throat> and then the 70, 71 school years when we moved up on the hill, and that's when the Mickens moved up with us. So uh -huh. it, it increased quite a bit. And we, we were really fortunate during that transitional period. A lot of the schools had problems when we uh, integrated. Uh -huh. Pasco, did, we didn't have any problems. Why was that? Miss Walker <laughs> and Miss Adams. Miss Adams. <laughs> were, well, what, was, what made the difference, Arthur? Cause that's I think a lot of the difference was before uh, we totally integrated. Dr. Malone was our principal. And he sent a bus over to Mickens and brought the kids that would be coming, the level, especially the juniors and the seniors, and brought them over. And we had some of our uh, black students that had already been with us, and they were the, the tour guides. And they took the kids all around. I think that made a big difference in them just, you know, coming ahead of time and seeing what was going on. Mm -hmm. And we all just worked together, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd see something starting to act up, and we'd step in. And the kids were real good about it, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, Dr. G. What Martha just said was true. Greta and Martha were the spirit of that school, and they set the tone. They took care of the, the kids. They made sure everybody was welcome. Tell them, Martha. And the parents, too. Uh, they talk about civil rights and civil rights leaders. But in my humble opinion, these were the civil rights leaders and were people who convinced others that we should all get along, we should all love each other, and we should all respect each other. And they meant it sincerely from the heart. Mm -hmm. And they didn't deviate and they didn't stand for any foolishness. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you're you, both very strict teachers. Yes, you know? and, and you had to understand that they were about right, and they wanted you to be about right, and they didn't care what color you were. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. It was just your moral fiber, your character, and uh, those were the things that, and they were there to teach, and they let you know right off the bat that that was their job, and they, they performed it exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And you loved them for it. Mm -hmm. Which means, Martha, you were pretty intuitive. You knew when something was brewing or a student needed something. Right. You had set up an inherent, you and, and Miss Adams, right? We tried. Yeah, I would just think that would have to have been the case. Was that because of your parents? Were you raised that way? And, or you, no. you and Greta were just, <laughs> no. you were, you just had I was a raised sort of an old timey, deep, 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 deep south. Uh huh. But, uh, I mean, kids are kids. I don't care who they are or where they come from, they're kids. Uh -huh. And all I wanted them to do was just, <coughs> first thing was respect me. Uh huh. And then the love would come later. And, Hopefully that's what I tried to instill in them. Now, we mentioned, the group mentioned humor. Some people are real effective in using humor and others don't have the best timing in the world. <laughs> and, but you and Miss Adams seem to really have a, a real well, we, ability of when to use humor. Did you use humor, Martha, in a way to diffuse conflict or I just, entertain or I show entertained. the students? Did they show the students they were human by doing that? I mean, I'm just asking. Um, I just like to entertain. You like to entertain? Mm -hmm. They like to have fun. Right. Fun. <laughs> and the and I, wanted, I wanted my kids to have fun. Uh -huh. I wanted them to look forward to coming to my class. Uh -huh. And if and they knew if they could ever get me tickled or say something <laughs> that, you know, we we had it made. So and I did. I enjoyed I enjoyed that part of it. That was so particularly you, endearing to the students too, you know, so that just made them our favorite. So she didn't take herself so seriously that she couldn't laugh at herself and right. kids like that. They right. Really and do. compliment you. It, I mean it was just so uplifting. And it was just a joy and an honor to be able to interact within the boundaries that they set. And, and that's what I find many times that missing. The teachers do not set the boundaries. You knew that it was a boundary of respect and honor. And, uh, and it was fun. I mean, and you operated There was the reciprocal way. honor. Yes. Yeah, respect. I'm not sure that any of us ever took you up on your, your offer to come to your house and have push and grits. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is push and grits? I know grits. <laughs> that was what my mother used to say. Push your feet on the table and that was it. Push and grits. Grit and teeth. Mm -hmm. I did read that you ba that you made banana pudding oh, for yeah. the teams. Yep. Does she have, did anybody ever have her banana pudding? It must be great. Great. I, saw I was amazed at how many, if they, like, whoever, whichever class did better on my comma test, they got a banana pudding. Oh, so you made it for the whole class. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. And then one year, the baseball team just kept winning and kept winning, and I had several of the baseball players. So every time they would win, they would get, of course, I had to make two for the <laughs> baseball team. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised at how many of my students had never had banana pudding. Oh, my goodness. You know, that was just, I grew up eating mm -hmm. banana pudding. That's a pretty much of a mainstay comfort yeah. food, yeah. isn't it? And then one year with my adult ed, I taught adult ed one year, and I, uh, we had homemade ice cream. And several of them had never had homemade ice cream before. We used to turn homemade ice cream every Sunday. That's a nice segue into sure. sports, um, because Martha, you and Greta did fundraising. You did. You were there at the games. You were really involved. Right. Th this museum did a project with the Smithsonian Institute on um, hometown sports, 
and I, I work with them a little bit on that. Scott did too. But your name came up oh, several times. The, the girls in particular said, you need to include Martha. And I wasn't sure, did you coach some? You were there. Right. You were there I as attended their supporter. The ball and, right. Yeah. Because they, they really saw you as a coach. And the some year, of the local softball teams did. Oh, it was yeah. interesting. The year that we won the uh, state championship right, in football, right. I had most of those boys in my class. And I had a bulletin board in my room that said Ms. Walker's Youngins. And I had to get papers. Mm -hmm. I took a paper every day and I kept the clippings and would put them on the bulletin board. Well, you might as well forget, especially my fifth period when I had most, most football boys, forget the first five minutes of the class because they were going to hit that bulletin board to see if I had that article. And I better have that article up there. I heard about it. So, so you were, you attended the games, you were supporters, but you didn't, you did raise money as well. Oh and yeah, we, we, Greta and I started a gym. We didn't have a gym back then. We found out later it was illegal. Mayor told us. But. When was the gym? When was that gym built? Like I don't even remember. Like the eighties, uh, seventy-seven, seventy-eight school yeah, year, I think. Yeah, it was around seventy-four. But that's yeah, true. Greta, Greta, and Martha started a fund to get themselves a gym because if it, they felt like they needed one. Of course, everybody felt like they needed one, but no one had any money. So they started a fund to, to and raise money for that. Mm -hmm. And we had it fixed where nobody could touch the fund but she and I. Nobody. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't touch it without her signature, and she couldn't touch it without well, mine. There's nobody be better to do that than the business teachers. That was <laughs> wonderful thinking, wasn't it? <laughs> and we had to explain that every year to the auditor because we we kept the um, deposit book uh -huh. at the school, and we used the money a lot a lot of times for uh, a lot of times the kids would go to camp and they didn't have the money and we'd finance it that way. And the last of the funds we used to uh, build the dugouts at the baseball stadium. That was how we spent the last. Did you, were you, the two of you involved in sports the whole time? Like Going to them, to no, but we didn't, neither one of us coached anything. Uh -huh. but and I should probably mention that, that Miss Adams became a principal about seven, mm -hmm. what, about what year did she become? I think 77. I 77, 1977. 1977. So I she was at the high school then, what? and then continued to be a supporter, but she was yeah. at the feeder school, the yeah. junior high. So in, involved in that, and then later I don't think the you ever missed a football game, am I right? Not to my knowledge. Yeah. Not many basketball games. Mm -hmm. And when we first, when I first came here, when she did, most of our football games were played in Polk County. Because you only had Pasco, Zephyr Hills, and Gulf, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Were the high schools in Pasco County at that time. So most of our games, we had to travel to uh, Polk County. Mm -hmm. And we did. And there were, in the literature that I looked at, and, and the two of you can, all three of you can attest to this, I mean, there are just thank you letters, the plaque that is in the gym mm -hmm. now, um, all kinds of tributes over time to the work you did. Right. Now, that leads me to a, a fun part of this interview, okay? okay? Um, which is you also raise money for FBLA. Oh, yeah. Right? And your, your chapter of FBLA I believe Jeanette, you told me Jeanette mm -hmm. Thompson was the state president. Right. And you were the state president of the city leagues? Uh, well, the Florida League of Cities. Florida, yeah, that Florida was League of Cities. Years but later. I mean, I just yeah. say that because these are the students right. that came. Well, Lisa from Brooks you. was also state president for FBLA. Yeah. Yeah. We had two Which state presidents. Which is quite an from outstanding. From but um, one of the things I learned, Martha, and I worked with you a lot later for just a couple years. Um, but I didn't know that you sang. I don't. And I asked several people if indeed you sing, and they said you do, that you were often, um, that uh, Maggie. I sang once a year. Maggie, Maggie <laughs> Beaumont's kids yeah. would off, uh, often do the backup. They had this Senior little brothers. band, like a folk mm -hmm. band kind of thing. And the most famous song you were known for was what? So, Mama Don't Whoop Little Buford. <laughs> Mama Don't Whoop Little Buford. And when I posted the words this morning for our panel, Scott told me that you didn't, 
you didn't use some of the nasty, the naughty words that I did <laughs> from the original Homer and Jethro song. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Is there any way that we might... This song came out of um, Disney's, oh, what was it? One of the Disney's part, uh, it part. Mama don't whoop little Buford. Mama don't beat on his head. Mama, don't whoop little Buford. I think you should shoot him instead. <laughs> the bear, the the bear, the oh, bear, okay. bear, 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 and then it goes on with some other things about he was smoking at age five and so on. That must have been the thing that she did not approve. No, I didn't okay. sing that. So you were known for that first, I thought you sang rather well. Well, thank that was you. very good. Um, other I, comedy. One year when, uh, oh, what was the, Father Barnhart was at the breakfast and he came up and was talking to me, mentioned the singing and I said, well, you know Father Barnhart? I sing it every year in hopes Hee Haw will discover me and I can quit teaching and be on Hee Haw. Uh -huh. He said, Martha, don't give up your day job. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was this Hee Haw event? This was a fundraising? This was a fundraising for FBLA and okay. we did it every year. All, a bunch of the teachers, we had a square dancing team and then Greta and I portrayed uh, Lulu and, and uh, String Bean. <laughs> and we would sing, and a lot of the kids would sing, and we had the square dancing, which was composed of all, all the teachers. But it was a fundraising thing for the kids to go to district contests and state contests uh -huh. and national contests. And we would put it on at school during the day, and then we put it on at night for the adults. So oh, we raised quite a bit of money. So it was a big year. community oh, event yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. And I noticed there were... Do you think Miss Walker was string bean or Lulu? <laughs> <laughs> we're all envious of her over time and her slim, attractive yeah, figure. Ask the course. Which leads me to another question, and I asked Martha if mm -hmm. I could ask this question. I noticed in looking over the, um, the pictures, and there are... Almost every yearbook is dominated by you and, and Greta, and I mean that in a loving way. There are numerous, numerous pictures, and one of the things I noticed was two years after uh, Martha was at Pasco High School, the yearbook was dedicated to her. Maybe it was the first year. I think it was the second year, right? Second year. The second year. Same thing with Greta. I think mm -hmm. maybe the first year she was there. That's phenomenal when you think about it, to be w that well right. known. You know, I, I was well, It was an that. honor for us. That was, that was, and you were the Grand Marshal of the Homecoming, Homecoming Parade, parade. Uh, um, as well. Those were just such big events in the day. But, uh, um, you also were involved in the pep rallies. Oh yeah. You did skits and oh, yeah. activities there too. We like, love to do that. We, we, she and I both just love to entertain. I saw you in cheerleader outfits, oh, yeah. you and Greta, oh, oftentimes, yeah. and, and the Pete, the right. Pasco shirts mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And the kids loved it too. Oh yeah. Just, oh, yeah. And we refereed ball games, believe me. We almost <laughs> got kicked out of the baseball game. Lamar Watson was... <laughs> official. He turned, he said, ladies, I have had all of your mouths I'm going to take now. Mm -hmm. Well, we hushed because he had been known to throw parents out. Uh -huh. So we didn't want to get thrown out of you the You didn't like the ref calls? Is that kind Oh, of? We, we didn't think he was calling for Pasco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's true, allegiance. You have, you have to know that there was sort of a rebel streak in each one of them. Uh, if things weren't going just so, I used to get calls at night. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that, Mary. And uh, They were a bit unorthodox. Oh, yeah. They would call me at night and tell me what was going on and why it was wrong and what I needed to do about it. Uh -huh. And I did my best, you know. <laughs> I had to take care of Martha and Greta. She was a great friend and supporter, wasn't oh, yes. she? Martha? Oh, yes. Yeah, I know that she and Ms. Adams were great friends. And In fact, you. going back to the business English, we went to Mary. We had had several of the teachers to, you know, want to know 
if we could have business English count as an, the senior English credit. Mm -hmm. So naturally we went to Mary, and Mary helped us get that through. Mm -hmm. That as long as the kids were, had, uh, if they were involved in the business program, mm -hmm. and they took the business English and used it as a credit towards graduation, we got it, right. we got that mm -hmm. settled. Mm -hmm. Where the kid didn't have to take English four and business mm -hmm. English. Well, I insisted that every one of my nieces and nephews take her course. <laughs> Could I make just one comment uh, regarding sports when you were saying, and the, the, the saying was that if you didn't get the scholarship that you wanted and you weren't playing at the school that you wanted to uh, play at, you hadn't talked with Ms. Wal to Miss Walker and Miss Adams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was there to help you with the college admission or the, the no. school, I mean the scholarships. No, she there. just knew. I don't know how they did it. But any school that you wanted to attend and you had the credentials, somehow they could call the coach or call somebody and they would respond, even Bear Bryant. <laughs> they would respond. Well, Alabama, I can see they might have had a connection. Yeah, they, <laughs> no, she had a framed photo of Bear Bryant in her office. Oh, really? Yeah. On the wall. Roll Tide. Yeah. It was either framed or tacked to the wall, but there was a picture of Bear <laughs> Bryant on her wall by her desk. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, that's great. And do you guys still hear her in your head when you're writing a letter and that kind of thing? Yeah. Everything. When I'm you know, determining whether or not a comma needs to go somewhere, <laughs> yes, I think it needs to Well, that's quite a bit profound legacy. It really is. Dangling participles and, yes. <laughs> and a sentence with a preposition. Right. How about the community, Martha? I think we can't we can't minimize this this whole period of time of integration and things that were happening, and a lot of that, you know, Dr. Giel and mm -hmm. Mr. Waitman, and there were so many <coughs> other people involved in that as well. But we didn't have the issues here in this area that that other places did, no, to a large extent. But you you saw that change taking place um, in the late '60s that yeah. whole period of time and then but the community was changing too Pasco High was such a important part of the community oh, yeah. um, and when you were placing students in different businesses how you must have known the businesses like I, I understand there was one person you placed in the supervisor of elections office that was Greta's that she was, was Greta's uh, placement? Yeah, she was the CBE coordinator. She started the CBE program at uh -huh, the school. Uh -huh. yeah, she placed him in the first And office. him is Kurt Browning, our uh, superintendent. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And I had a picture of him I showed Martha mm -hmm. earlier tonight. Maybe we could put it in the, the tape where she is teaching Kurt how to march. <laughs> and he, he texted me and he said, Please understand, I was one of 61 that she was teaching out of. <laughs> it wasn't only me, <laughs> but it looked like you were teaching him how to do right, right. left, right left. Right. Yeah. So you always did that for graduation, oh, yeah. or for many years you did the, the ceremony, right. and, which kind of fits with what you said about the honor and the protocol, and that she would want that to be a respectful. And they do the, the graduation on the um, football field, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a lot to to manage. Right. They still do it, I believe. There was always thought that was phenomenal. Well you were a senior sponsor so many years you had to say no more, didn't you? And they, right. they'd still bring her in to to lead in the march and teach us the march uh -huh. and yeah. pomp and circumstance. So. Yeah. A lot of your students went on to become uh, business teachers and other teachers. I heard oh, from yeah. Idell Lane who was at she wasn't your student, mm -hmm. but she told me that you were her role model. She always tried to convince Ray Stewart to allow her to Go, go visit you at Pasco, Ohio. <laughs> but she said it never worked. But she, she sat with you in the um, meetings at the district mm -hmm. office and tried to pick your brain. And Janice McFerrin yeah. became, um, I'm not sure, she was a CBE teacher? Or she was a... She was a business, business, business teacher. Business, she yeah, was also, she, uh, she came in second place, I believe it was, one year at state for shorthand. Uh-huh. But you must have had many, many students that became teachers. Teachers, uh, athletes, musicians, judges, lawyers, accountants, bankers. Mm -hmm. You know, it just makes me mighty proud 
sit back and say, that young and came from Dade City, Florida. Yeah. And you know, Martha, the research, it says that one teach one person makes the difference. They turn one, they, one adult that cares about a student will turn that, my goodness, to think of the people that you've impacted. Okay, what other questions do we have? I want to end with something about the overall legacy. But Scott, what have I, Arthur, Mary, what else do we need to, to mention here? I think, I think uh, Martha and Greta are people, you know, when you think of teachers, they really were what teachers are supposed to be. It was, sure, it was the subject matter what they were teaching, but they were teaching much more than that. Mm -hmm. They were teaching a lot of joy of life, too, mm -hmm. as well as respecting one another, caring for one another. They did that by their them just showing mm -hmm. how, how to do that. And I, th I think that, as I said, they were the spirit of Pasco High School in more ways than one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to my the legacy, I would say, is that two great educators and ladies passed our way. particularly formative years, the junior high and high school years, and, it, it, and I say formative, it was also very, quite awkward at times, you know, when you're a junior high student and have Miss Adams there coming in as the principal and she was a hugger and, you know, you know she always told the students how much she believed in them and that really did help with the self-confidence. And then when you get into high school, I, you know, still awkward, but you had, you know, the, uh, the discipline of Miss Walker as well as the, the fun-loving of Miss Walker, the, the fun-loving spirit, and that certainly helped us through. And, um, and just, just so many things that we learned at that time that, I, as I mentioned, like the business English, that was probably the most valuable course I've ever taken. And I know that, you know, I wish more people could take that. In fact, I wish that the assistants that work with me could have business English. <laughs> I've had to learn to overlook some things on, you know, when they'll hand me something that they've, you know, prepared, typed up, and, um, but, uh, but also the, the common sense things on how to live your daily life, like don't do something that's tacky. That was another <laughs> favorite thing that Miss Walker would say. She'd say, that's tacky. And, uh, or, she'd, or she'd catch herself and say she was doing something tacky. Or, and uh, so just all these these fun things that we remember, but made a real difference in, in our Or you future. might want horns, but you're going to die butt-headed. Butt <laughs> 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 that is a good one. Or I'm going to bust you wide open. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think, uh, Martha? What is your legacy? And that's a lot of years to, to teach school. I think just the love of my kids and knowing that they've they done were your, well. They were my youngins. They were your youngins that's and your right. babies. I remember right. Greta used to say that, the, the, my babies. And, and I still look forward to them coming to see me. I look uh -huh. forward to hugging them mm -hmm. and look forward to uh, making their babies my Christmas stockings, okay. <laughs> so you have multi-generation. Arthur oh, yeah. and I were talking about that well, earlier. That you are... could come to my house and see my refrigerator. It's slammed full of my youngins as youngins, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's great. I forgot to mention about your poodle. That's yeah. kind of an interesting little anecdote. The uh, 64 graduating class gave me a little poodle, and I named him Mr. 64. Mm. <laughs> He was, he was the meanest dog I've ever seen in my life. He bit everybody in my family, everybody but my daddy. <laughs> and uh, I kept him for, four, I think he was 14 when I had to have him put to sleep. Mm -hmm. But what was so funny was when they presented him, I thought they were giving me a, a stuffed animal. Oh, I've never been a stuffed animal person. <laughs> and all of a sudden he turned his head and I knew then it wasn't a stuffed uh -huh. animal. And um, Mr. 64. Mr. 64. You remember um, Agnes Lamb? Mm -hmm. Well, her daughter was in that senior class. So Ms. Lamb came to school that day and she took my little poodle home mm -hmm. with her until school was out and then brought him back to me. Mm -hmm. so. I don't think I've ever heard of students giving a, a teacher. I mean, uh, that's really, that says something, Martha, really. 
thing. I want to ask the group. Jeff is a teacher. Anybody have any other questions? Because I want to make sure we've covered everything. I feel like there's so much more. Anything else? We have a young man who worked for us. He worked for us. And he calls himself one of his brother's boys. Uh -huh. And he talks all the time about Greta and Miss Walker and how they influenced him. They really, I mean, I know Greta helped him uh, go along the right way, the right path. And his path. name was? Larry, Larry Collins. Larry Collins. So. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I know for sure Greta helped him. Yeah. And yes. like I said, he always wife, talked about it. His daughter was very close friend. Mm -hmm. John's. I still have an IBM Selectric typewriter in my office. Do you really? <laughs> when the Zephyr Hills Hospital was getting rid of all of theirs, they had a community yard sale or something, and then I picked one up, and the Bank of America still had one, so they told me somebody that could fix it. And I still have it in the back in my back office. Now it's a Selectric 3, which came along, I think, after I graduated, but it still had that marvelous lift off tape. Yeah. You, know, you just backspace <laughs> and lift off. And I just thought when I was in school, to have an IBM Selectric typewriter someday would be the mark that I'd really made it, the mark of success. <laughs> and so typewriters were on their way out, but when I saw that one, I just had to have it. And I have found a place that still supplies the ribbons. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how often you still need to put something in a typewriter. Well, several and years ago, one of my ex-students had called and asked me if I would write a letter of recommendation. Well, I didn't have a typewriter of my own, and I called the high school to see if they had one I could borrow. Well, they didn't have one. So I called the uh, supply place, and I said, is there any such thing as buying a typewriter? And she said, yes, ma'am. In fact, we have one down here. I said, well, hold it. I went down and it, she sold it to me as a used, and it was the same kind of typewriter that I used in my classroom. Oh my goodness. Wow. So I have a typewriter, uh -huh. and it has correct tape. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could burn up the keys, and I could take, and see this is something they taught us, to take yeah. out the paper and then put it back in and line it up again, and you correct it and type, and, and to do it to where you could, could not tell that it had been done. And I can still do that to this day. That's something that, Valuable I learned, even though the things have gone obsolete, I can still, but there are still times that you need oh, yeah. to put something in a typewriter and put a little something on there that maybe you couldn't do with the um, computer or maybe oh, yeah. a form that someone Forms. brings into sure. you that needs to be typed. Sure. And, yeah. and how many students did you have in a class back in the day? 35 and 40. And you as, were teaching all of them As how to long do as I had a typewriter. Because honest to goodness, I can't imagine. Yeah, 35 and 40. And you had to take care of that equipment and, and, and some of us were not real coordinated. <laughs> I remember typing scared me to death as a freshman. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a hard thing to learn right. and to get the mechanics right. of it. And you had that many students in a class. Amazing. As long as I had a typewriter, I had the students feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 35 and four. Back then, you had to fill out your own report cards. Well, they mm -hmm. came in those IBM boxes. And Greta and I had so many students until we absolutely had to carry our report cards around in one of those big IBM boxes. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys taught during 4515. Oh, yes. Lord too. God, yes. <laughs> worst thing in the world Would that ever happened. Would you like happened. to comment on that? Even I think it was the worst Dr. thing Jelly? in the world that ever <laughs> happened. I noticed system. there were a couple of uh, newspaper articles that quoted mm -hmm. you and yeah. Miss Adams. We almost we got into trouble with what's his face, Martin. Ralph. Yeah. Oh, forty-five, fifteen. <laughs> You've been teaching a few years when. Oh yeah. yeah, quite a few. Well, you saw a lot of changes. You you must have worked for a, a lot of principals and administrators. Quite a few, yeah. quite a few. Ferguson, Ferguson was the first principal. Who? Ferguson. Oh yeah. And yeah. then Malone. Yeah. And then Malone was several years, and then uh, Dellinger, Dellinger took yeah. over Malone, and then uh, oh, what was his name? Buff Johnson. No, Buff was the last one I taught under. Buff was your student too, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think who it was. His wife was it 
His wife taught elementary. Oh, um, yeah. Um, Charles, no. He was a coach also. He was at the junior high before he went to the high school. Yeah. I'll think of it here in a minute. Reedy? No, no. Reedy. No. He came, he was Ryan, Ryan, yeah, Chuck, Chuck Ryan. Ryan. Oh, Chuck Ryan, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was there. And then uh, Buff was the principal when I uh -huh. retired. Yeah. Uh, Tidi. Tina oh, Tina Tidi. Tina Tidi. Yes, she, she was, was there. Uh, That's right. She was there. And Buff took over for her. Yeah. yeah. And he was there when I retired. Yeah. Well, it's so it's such an honor to have this and have have a, a legacy of this and those of us that well, have been it's been a pleasure and I certainly appreciate well, it. Well, it's wonderful, Martha. We're so my young ones being here. And, well, I wonder if we could get a picture of the three of them. I, don't, I guess we lost Richard. Could I get you to take a picture? Just, I think that'd be Tell fun. about the project we're doing business English. Remember we had a product? And oh, it was a sales product. <laughs> uh -huh. They had to uh, come up with a product they wished to sell. Okay. Then they had to make the product then they had to write a letter selling the product. They had to do a radio commercial, and then they had to act out a TV commercial. Oh my goodness. Funny, oh Lord, some of them were so funny. There were some good ones. But I had to quit that because it got to, the, they had to work in groups, and it got to where only maybe one person was actually doing the work, so mm -hmm. I had to cut that out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't fair to the other kids. Well, Chris Drew said that I had 600 words for this article, which mm -hmm. is going to be really hard. Because I'll tell you, every newspaper I write for, they, they really gripe at me a lot because I always go way over. <laughs> like BC would tell you that. Um, so this is going to be really hard. But what do I have to include in this? I have to include the soul of the school, the honor and legacy that, that you talked about, Arthur. I want to quote you on that. I mean, that really, and, and some of the the fact that she sang the song for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, seriously, is there anything in particular that's just got to be in there? And I think I might have to run by her house and have her check the commas because I'm very nervous about that now. <laughs> I think you have to highlight the, the, the friendship, too. The deep the friendship. Right. Right. Definitely yeah. that. That's a story in itself. It, is. it really is because you were work friends and personal friends and all of those. Up until decades. the day she passed away. Yeah, yeah. And she, she passed away at 62, which is, is mm. such a young age. Right. What, a, what a loss. We haven't talked a whole lot about Greta, but she was really instrumental and in, um, probably one of the first women in, in administration, wasn't she, Mary? Talk to Greta about going into administration, and she said, "Di, I, I, I really don't think I can do that." And I said, "Well, think about some of the principals you worked for." <laughs> yeah. And she said, "Yeah." And I said, uh, "Don't you think you could do better?" And she said, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> And I know I, one of the articles I read, Martha, was that Greta said she would not have gotten the master's degree if it wasn't for you because well, you took care of her children. And well, her kids were like my own young ones, so that wasn't an imposition, well, that's, that's but I was glad a, to do it. That's quite a friendship yeah. that you, like you said, you were almost family. You were family. We were family. So. Yeah. Well, thank you, Thank you. Greta. I, I, I mean, um, Martha, I hope that... We hear from a lot of people. I know we will. Well, thank you. I appreciate I, it. Because I, I post, I had, I scanned 80 pictures, and I got so many responses, <laughs> including Kurt, who yeah. wanted to clarify <laughs> he could march. Uh -huh. But um, it was just amazing. That it, and it, almost everyone said she was my favorite teacher. She made a difference in my life, a profound Well, I appreciate difference. that. So um, that's, that's quite a... A legacy I just wish I had kept her. a journal all these years, all those years. Mm -hmm. I well, could write these, a book. Some of these folks have, have kept a uh, aspect. <laughs> <laughs> now, now are you going to tell the true story about Scott, no. the awkward years? No. <laughs> well, that's, that's what, as I said when we came in, thankfully she's had so many students through the years. She, we began to run together and forget <laughs> yeah. Or we can, we can say, no, that wasn't me, that was another student. She was getting confused. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, Martha. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, appreciate for bringing her. I so appreciate it. This was nice. I'll do my best. <laughs> okay.
Thank you, Jeff. It'll be so nice to have this for it. Have the as, as uh, Scott said, we'll have the song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll be good.